So in this tutorial, we will explore how to use new requirements verification in table capability. So now starting uh, this uh, 2021 uh, release two, the requirements verification can now be performed directly in the requirements table. The analysis is carried out evaluating whatever the value of the property satisfying the requirements is within range of the lower and upper bounds extracted from the requirement text. And that is done automatically. So in this version, it works with automatic requirements, text extraction, and later it will work also with custom constraints. Additionally, the automatically calculated margin values helps to determine how the close the system model is to fulfill the requirements. So now let's switch to the model. Here we have a very small model, this vehicle with temperature, with the default value and the mass, with the default mass, just deliberately as small as it can be to show those steps. Here we have also Excel with the requirements, so temp range, right, and mass limit. As you can see here is more advanced uh, requirement text than it was supported before. So now we can have ranges which will be recognized between 20 and 35, right? And we can have also such kind of constructs like 350 plus minus four kilograms, right? So also will be recognized as automatic constraints. This whole engine actually of requirements uh, extraction from text uh, got uh, completely redefined so now you can have uh, advanced patterns customized by yourself and new patterns were introduced now we have like eight of them so now as a first step we'll go and we'll create requirements table uh, we'll show the columns which are automatically mapped to excel on drag and drop so id name text and then we'll take the excel and drag it here and read from Excel. And then we'll choose type of requirement we want to have. So here we have it, right? With the status that knows new prop new requirements were created. You see like new requirements were created. We can switch that and um, like that. And in order to recognize the text, we need to switch on automatic uh, usage of the glossary. So let's go to the options project and then general, general, use requirements from glossary, true. So you see it now is underlined. Now let's go to the model and let's make those uh, satisfy relations. So temperature and mass. Those could be contextual relations like based on the parts used in the system and could be also, you know, like uh, based on the usage, right, of those properties, right? And it could be like that, you know. So here we have, and now we can move mouse over to see that constraints were recognized co correctly. You see temperature more equal 25 and uh, temperature less equal 35, right? So temperature, this is constraint, right? Uh, now here, let's see. Again, correctly recognized two constraints combined into a single one. Now let's run simulation and see how that will work. Simulation run. Here we have temperature 20 requirement is not satisfied and this one requirement is satisfied, right? So now we can save that uh, whole data to the instance. Here, save it. Now we'll have the instance with those values at that moment when we did analysis, right? Now let's go to requirements table and show those columns. So we can show columns uh, as a value, margin, property, and bound, right? So here we have it. So value, and this value is the same value which is actually satisfies this requirement. Value, bounds, margin, how much this uh, out of limit or in limit, right? So here minus five, right? And then actual value, right? And you would want to see also red and green based on the requirements satisfy not satisfy uh, status so we can go here to the legends and switch on requirements verification display and that will color code right so this table can be based on the default values as you can see here coming from the block uh, and properties which satisfy requirement it also can be based on instance so if we will move the instance here and let's do the instance actually a bit different run the simulation from the instance again and change those values. Let's say let's uh, 40 here. 
and or maybe like uh, 26 and this one will be 360 3600 right and then uh, save to the same instance let's say and now move that instance into the context as you can see here now we have different situation this one is not satisfied with margin minus 96 and this one is satisfied with margin one so it can be based on instance and same instance can be used or new instances can always be used in that case you know then we kind of you know check the status of the verification so as you can see here also we can set up automatically that new instance could be regenerated uh, so in that case we would need to create simulation config like this uh, like a uh, requirements uh, v and v then set the vehicle as the execution target and set instance for example this one as a result so take it here and go to the results location and this instance right so now every time we will run we will get this instance updated right so we can now no longer need to go to simulate something we can just click here and it will re-simulate uh, and uh, will uh, once finished uh, instance will be updated and uh, we will get the results here into this table as we can see here also we can set up that all these new instance would be created so in that case we need uh, for example results 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 package right go here and update that results package would be used here and also record timestamp which would be actually very helpful to get information about the ta time of the execution and let's run now so we execute we close the simulation and here we have the results you see now we can drag it and see at that execution moment what was the uh, timestamp right and those uh, values as you can see here they could be entered you know um, from the instance uh, they can be entered you know by the user or they can be entered uh, as a result of simulation right so you can do like a actual testing actual review and enter those values so you can uh, do the simulation and get those values like mass roll up for example and get those values also you can export the results so results can be exported as simple as like write to file and now all re results uh, uh, will will get the to the file but uh, I have no permission so let me check uh, what's wrong oh my excel is open so let's close the excel and then uh, write to file and now if i will go here and open excel here we have those properties based on the exported values everything gets updated whatever is updated in the model also here we can change you know and re-import again you know and get new new values back you know we don't need to for example to import those we might uh, skip them you know we can set up that mapping you know which will eliminate those properties only import this one part right and we'll set up that kind of in a second and uh, also we can keep this excel in the model like this you can drag it uh, attach to the model and distribute in the model right and just in that case you would need to go here to synchronization options and choose from model here like this and then choose it here and then the mapping as you can see here we have now the mapping completely done but we don't need those you see import those margins bounds and you know value because those are actual properties which we want to export so we can limit the import just to those properties right and uh, then you see like now still 25 but we, you remember we updated in excel so uh, read from file and you see like that updated and that automatically also gets updated you see margin now is zero and now we get this uh, legend uh, uh, shown but we can hide this legend and uh, in that case we'll see again validation results only so uh, you might ask actually how we can keep two mappings you know one with this 
import for import of the data never want to export this you can have two tables actually each table can have its own excel mapping and uh, then you will use one table to export complete data like including those and another table just to import the right data or you can just keep the same mapping and have like re-imported the same data okay so thank you so much and uh, for now this capability supports uh, redesigned glossary with the advanced uh, patterns you see here now patterns have the language right where we can define them you know 78 patterns goes out of the box uh, we have requirements verification in the table with margin property bounds and values and the future releases will have also this table working with custom constraints for now it works only with the text-based uh, recognized constraints thank you